In our last tutorial, we created this unique style in Squarespace, and this wouldn't have been available even two years ago, but since Fluid Engine plus some new additions on top of that within Squarespace, we can now do an awful lot with text-based layouts and without having to use any custom code. And next up, we're going to have a look at something similar, but more advanced. We're going to design this card effect layout. Yes, including drop shadows on each of these blocks. So we can put icons or images into these little windows. I've left them completely free at the moment, just because we use this as a starting point and then we flesh out the content. Before we start building this, there's a couple of caveats. One is we're looking at three lines of text for our summary at most and up to two lines of text in our title so that we don't end up having to increase the height of all of these cards. Of course, that's an option so that they're all nice and uniform. We're not going to worry so much about the left-hand side. We're just going to work on this card layout here. And I'm going to show you the easiest option first that requires a subscription to the Square website's Chrome extension, which is actually bundled into our Squarespace Designer Power Pack that includes everything, including this Square Forged a huge collection of starting templates that you can use on any Squarespace site. I've left a link in the description for more information about that. But the second part of this tutorial is I'll show you how to build all of this from the ground up, so completely free, providing you have an active Squarespace subscription. And this needs to be Squarespace 7.1 as well. So we're going to copy that section. This is using the Chrome extension. I need to be logged into the admin for that to work and to make sure that I've got the extension enabled once it's installed. So at Chrome extension, you search for Google Chrome extension or the Square Websites Tools Chrome extension. So I've done a quick search for Square Websites Chrome extension. And in the Chrome Web Store, we can see we've got that option to install it. I've already got it installed, so I don't need to do anything else at this stage. And then you can sign up to a subscription for the Pro version. That will give you so much to work with. So we're going to copy that section. I think I already have. So now we can go to our test page and we can choose without going into the edit view. We have this pull-up window and then we can insert that section. It does come with a disclaimer that it's not perfect. And we can see here that there are some issues with the cards that might be permanent, that might be temporary. Most of the time it does it bang on. We have a perfect transition across. But see, there's quite a few assets in this type of design because it's more advanced. So that's why it's taking a little bit longer. There we go. So that's been inserted. I've not shown you the best example using this extension, but if I just refresh the page, does it allow the cards? Yeah, we can see they come back in now. I think some of those effects just needed a refresh. But what we can see is the drop shadow color has changed. So it's picked up from the color palette on the site. So we just need to just go through and change that. What I'm going to do now, though, is disable that extension. I'm going to show you quickly how to tidy up this version. So we can jump in and edit it. And we can see the different layouts here that we just need to reorganize this. Squarespace does some kooky things sometimes with, with different layouts. Yes, yeah, so we've got the rounded corner buttons there. The only thing with this is all of our buttons are rounded, so that might cause problems. But that's essentially how we go through and work on this particular layout. We could make this centrally aligned here to have the button floating in each of the blocks. And what we're going to do with our designs, a slightly different to the other one, is we're going to go in and edit them. We'll change the drop shadow, of course. We can even go to custom. And let's choose like a, a light gray silver effect. But we're going to keep it monochrome in this particular example. So once we've done that, we can see now that we've got our new drop shadow we might have to just change the angle. There we go, so the card is dropping at the bottom. And then just a case of a little bit of fine tuning and working around it then. The vast majority of layouts we bring across from Square Forge work from the, from the offset. But some of the more advanced ones require a little bit of fine tuning to get them to work as we want. Squarespace seems to do this with text blocks. I have no idea why it just makes them twice, three times as long in some cases than they need to be. It's a really frustrating little bug that's been in Squarespace for a while. But anyway, that's how we can do it more efficiently, more quickly. Let's just show you how we do it from scratch. And we're going to add a blank section. Now let's go with the darkest 
format. So we're going to do a high contrast night mode version of it. So let's have a look here. This is what we're copying, but we're going to adapt it to fit. Sorry, this is what we're going to copy, but we're going to adapt it to fit the styling of our site, which means rounded corners on just about everything. So to start off with, I'm going to add in a text block. And I'm going to copy this text from here and place it in. So far, so good. Now we're going to add a shape. And this shape is going to be not the darkest color, but just lifting off it slightly. So I'm going to edit it. And what you'll see is I'm going to do one first. We're going to get that right before we start duplicating them. We're also going to test that one in mobile before doing anything else. So with that shape added, I can use this button here to move backwards and we can just move it right the way to the back until that option becomes grayed out. Now we can start shaping the lock as we want. I think maybe we'll go with three. So I'm just going to duplicate this. I know I said we're going to work on one on its own to start with. I'm just doing this to get an idea of the right width. So we can have three uniform designs. Yeah, I think that's, that's our size. And I'm going to make this uh, paragraph three, actually, just to make the text a little bit smaller. And we're going to bring it in one from the side. So the first thing we've got is I don't really want to give it too much space. But I also don't want the text to the edge of this block. So there's a little workaround. We can add a background, but make that background transparent. Or just to be on the safe side, we can make it the same color and transparent. And then we can add some padding to the left and the right. So we can manually adjust the padding that goes around that text area. The only thing we have to do now is change the color of that text. And now we've got the change of color. I'm going to align that text to the center of the block. So we're looking at some good consistent spacing above and below. We still got to put the button in, so we we'll probably need to do something with that. So in fact, let's just put it top line for now. And we also need to add our image. Oops, didn't mean to press gallery. So let's delete that. Now add our image block. So now we've got some options. What I'm going to do differently here is I'm actually going to add a photo into the section. So we're not going to use just a color swatch card. Let's use um, this astronaut here. And that's a square image. So we can use the image editor here, if we want to manually crop images to square, that gives you the best control and also the best load time on that photo, because we're not loading. If it was a portrait image, we're not loading a section that is cropped out of this photo, but still there as part of file size. So that's one thing we can do. We can also, let's set the shape to a circle. Yeah, we're going to go with circle. And we're going to bring this out so it comes out closer to the text. What we can also do is increase or reduce the height of that circular image. And then look at our spacing. And if we go to this option here, let's get rid of the top and bottom padding altogether. And let's make this bold. Okay. Now we've got to this circular image aligned to the center of that block. So there's good even spacing around it. We've used the background styling on this text block. 
to give us nice breathing space left and right for that. And now we're going to add in a button below. A lot of this is just about playing around with it until you get an effect that you're happy with. I really got to start pressing the right options, don't I? So let's go and add that block again. And this time we're going to click on button. And we're going to look at the different styling options that we've got in our site. They're all rounded corners. So with that in mind, let's go for the outline effect. And I'm going to make it a quite a small style button, but that's way too chunky. So what we can do in here now is go to the pencil icon, design, and maybe get it to fit the frame as opposed to filling it. That's still quite a big, heavy button. But with Squarespace, we've got the option to choose our button styles. So what I could choose is definitely the second button and make it more compact, but that will affect the rest of the site and I've got everything laid out as I want. So I'm not going to worry too much about that particular aspect. So what I am going to do in this case instead is get it to fill the frame. And then we can make it narrower. But the way I would work on it is just work on that spacing in the button styling options as opposed to editing it here because that's a little bit cramped for what I want, but it'll do for now. So let's, before we go and edit this on mobile, let's have a look at the outline on it. So we'll go to the pencil icon. Let's switch this to 20 pixel border radius. See how that looks. Just takes the edges off the, the frame, but that's still not really standing out a huge amount. We can add the drop shadow. It's not going to be as obvious. I'm going to put this as a black drop shadow. And make sure it's on 100%. Yeah, it's really not having that effect because of the dark background. So let's instead go with this color layout. We're going to, have to change the color of the text. We could try it with blue cards. Let's try that. Yeah, I think we'll go with that. This time we're going to change the color to the navy color. Again, a little bug in Squarespace. Sometimes we have to do them separately. In fact, I'm going to go with the darkest color. This is why I suggest working on one card first. Get it right exactly as you want it. Because our button now has changed color. And that's something we've got to work with. The reason it's doing this, that's what the default color is for that particular palette. So dark one. What I can do with dark one is whenever there's this navy, we can change the button style into a white background when on a navy backdrop. Hopefully that makes sense. So what I can do is look for buttons. Okay, so primary button background, we can see it's the blues. So let's change that to the white. Now we're cooking. Okay. Happy with the button text color. Again, I can go and style this in the button styles to adjust the padding accordingly. But I think for now, we'll go with that because we need a color that will work on both the card and on the backdrop. I could always go in and work on the, with a custom code. I've got a block identifier here. That's free. Again, another uh, Chrome extension. This one's free to use called Squarespace ID or block finder or identifier. If you search for that, you'll find various tools like this. So we could copy that block reference number and then add some custom CSS. If you're comfortable using custom code with Squarespace, it means you can target the background color for this and do whatever you want with it, really, including the spacing for this particular use. But we'll go with that. It's not perfect, but it's fine for what we want. I'm in an hour in which one is the best approach here. I think I'm going to go with a slightly larger image in that circular frame. Right now, I think that's as good as I'm going to get it. Let's just go in and reapply this drop shadow effect.
and we can tweak with the angle, the distance, and the blur effect to get something that we're quite happy with. It's very subtle. It's just about picking up on this screen, but it may not on yours. But this would work better if we went on a lighter background and it would be more obvious. But believe me, it is there. So before we duplicate this and we wrap up this tutorial, I'm going to go to Mobile View. And now we can see it's all over the place. So we need to build this out for mobile as well. Drag our astronaut in. Make sure we bring this text layer to the front. Again, because we've got the padding on that text block, we can adjust it accordingly. And find this button somewhere now. There it is. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that button styling, but we'll go with it. So that's one of the challenges we've got now is just getting that to fit. This is probably what I want it to be. Where it's just in a grid layer, but we can see the spacing there is a little bit out. One option we could do is for it to go larger across the bottom, but narrower height. And I think that's what we'll do for now. I would probably use some custom code on these blocks just to get them perfectly spaced. Not really happy with that, if I'm being honest. Let's get this image in one. I think that's probably a bit too cramped. So we'll stick with that. Okay, once we've done that once, and we've got the card design that we're happy with, back to desktop, where it shouldn't change anything. And now we can duplicate this section across. It's now a case of doing this twice. What I should have done earlier as well is just work on the spacing because this will impact the rest of the design. What I often do is just put the, the other card next to it before fine tuning on mobile. And the reason I do this is once we've adjusted these content width sections, it will change the overall look and feel of the layout. So if we went for 20 horizontal spacing between each block, that has now changed how the design looks. I'm just going to remove these two once more. Double check this one on mobile. That's still working okay. Now we select everything in that block, duplicate it, and bring our card across and duplicate it again. Once we're done with that, we can duplicate them down, grid row, and we can adjust the height with spacing as well. So the gaps height-wise, to get these more in line, but it will affect everything else, as we can see here. But we can make the widths and the heights uniform, especially if we go up to, say, 25 widths. So we can get those card spacings to be nice and perfectly uniform. Once again, though, we have to go through and edit them. So it's always a trade-off, but you can, within 20 minutes to half an hour, create a unique card design layout that you can then save as a favorite using this option and then reuse on multiple pages. Again, if you want to do it the easy way, then grab a copy of Square Forge, our template builder. This is the master layout. And there's loads of designs here, not just for these more advanced card layouts, but things like hero sections as shown here, where we can put a background image in and we've got a ready-made card layout to put our content. Also, we can combine it, as I've shown earlier, with the Square Websites Tools Pro extension for Chrome, and that will allow us to bring those designs from Square Forge across to any page. Both are available in our Designer Power Pack, as shown on this page here, so pixelazer.academy forward slash Squarespace Designer. But I'll be back very soon if your purse strings are a little tighter at the moment, because I will show you how to build most, if not all, of the layouts that we've got on Square Forge. As shown in this example, some are just a little bit fiddlier and take a little bit longer than others. Anyway. Hope you've enjoyed and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.